somebody? I don't really know. I just plugged it in. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's like just taking that with a grain of salt and not worrying as much about like perfectionism and growing in different aspects of your life. So the like all of a sudden, right, it just kind of mends away and it's like just chill out. You can be messy and have just surreal achievements like you're still getting it done and you're still going hard because you know exactly where you want to be. So you just get there and you crush it. Right. And it's so cool to see that insight, just something I never thought about. It's a really powerful business use case of, you know, just killing it. Um, so <clears throat> digressing a little bit from, you know, the talk of like maximizing productivity. He also talks uh, in the book a lot about how businesses operate and how they use their uh, materials, people, uh, assets to, you know, output into the marketplace. Um, and there was one very, very specific example, kind of like halfway through the book, I thought was really, really interesting. And he's talking, you know, Okay. Oh gosh, guys, there's like two really good scenes, but I'll talk about this one first. Um, he's looking at airplane pilots and it was one of the, it was a really big, I forget the name of it. Um, but it was a really, really big crash on like an Airbus or, uh, like, a, like a commercial airliner. And what happened is they went into a storm and the, uh, gadgets froze over. Uh, so they couldn't measure airspeed. They couldn't measure a bunch of these things that they needed. And they just had the thing on autopilot, right? Because they were so used to the clarity and, uh, you know, not mess, right? Like it was so set up and clean with the autopilot system that they just set the thing on autopilot and they just kind of chilled out, landed the plane, took the plane off. And it sort of even did some of that for them too. Like they were having it on auto land. So they literally weren't even like flying the plane basically they had like they had done 80 flights I think and they said that the, the captain had like maybe four hours of actual flight experience or something like that um, so it was really cool to see like all of a sudden you have this new situation where there was no mess they weren't actually in the nitty-gritty getting it done so it's like well, what was gonna happen right so you have this plane and it's got you know three 270 300 people on it um, and it, it was freaking crazy because the guys they they couldn't tell uh, that, that the plane they pulled the plane up so that because they just had no clue what was going on. All their gadgets were messed up, right? So they go into this new scene and they're, you know, trying to figure out what to do. They just had, they don't know freaking, they don't know because they haven't been in the messy part of it. They've only had this clean, you know, autopilot experience. They pull the plane up, the plane stalls, um, and, and, then, and then the dough starts going down or they start pushing it down and, and then the system's like pull up, pull up, you know, whatever, right? Like stall. Um, and the guys just have no freaking clue what's going on because uh, their, their sensors are screwed up. Uh, and the guy on the radio, he doesn't know, like they got no clue. So they're like, they have to freaking make it work. They have to collaborate in the cockpit with the crew, with the, the co-pilot to make it work. This is a make or break team environment. And the guys just have no clue. They have like no experience in the real field doing it. The thing, the plane like goes straight down and they just, they, they're like, what's going on? They don't know. And, and he says like the final recording in the audio box was like, what's going on here? Cause the guys were just clueless when the plane just like slammed into the ground and it was because there was no mess in their workflow uh, or the, 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 the pilot schedule so they weren't actually getting the experience they needed and when it came to crunch time they were not able to perform up to par it was really really interesting and something that is it, it was a very good overarching theme in the book um, but also really just understanding exactly how to you know get the results that you need so that situations like that don't happen and you don't you know fall on your face when you need things to get done in crunch time um, but another really cool insight from it he talks about u.s news and world's report and like how the world report ranks the colleges and um, how a very very common element in ranking is selectivity and he talks kind of about how it turned they turned on applicants and so by sending out more and more invites to apply to the college they can increase their ranking on the on the report by um, you know changing the way that they approach admissions so I don't know if you guys saw my latest video uh, it was about just like the boatload of college spam I got had direct mail um, over the past like four years um, as a senior in high school and also you know this email stuff too but like looking specifically at that direct mail aspect of it and it was so cool to read this it was like these guys have been sending 200,000 personalized letters the the Northeastern University of Boston in 2012 um, with the following up letters with six to eight emails so they're sending out hundreds of thousands of letters directly 
uh, with direct mail, and then you know, multiples, hundreds of thousands, millions, millions of like emails to these guys, like just spamming and spamming, and like apply to our school, apply to our school, so that they can deny a bunch of them, and then get better selectivity ranking, increase their status with US News and World Report, and up their ranking, so that you know, once they get to the top of the ranking system, they can charge the most for their education and make the most money in that regard, so that they can have you know the best students, whatever it is. Um, but really, what they're looking to do is take what they have right now and sell it and sell it and really sell it so that they can have better rankings, better institutions, more people attending means more money to spend and growing and, and trying to improve the student experience. And it was really, really interesting to see how just the selectivity and applicant statistics and how these guys ranked it um, as a centralized entity for college credibility really affected pretty much the entire aspect and game in you know the college application world. It was like these guys were like out there in the middle of nowhere and they're talking exactly about how the frick like that they are literally changing the way people look at college because of these statistics and rankings that are affecting the way that universities fight for credibility um so that was a really good insight he talked a lot it was, you know good a bit about that um but that was something that really clicked on a personal note um the overall themes really are like just take mess and make it part of your life like if you don't get anything from this if you don't read this book which i would like totally recommend killer book um it's to take mass and implement it as a fundamental aspect of your work and personal careers so that you can improve the spontaneity and creativity that comes out of everything you do, no matter where you are or how you got there, using uh, mass as a way to really improve your output in the marketplace so that you can find new value out of whatever it is you wanna do and take that to the next level really so that you can really, I feel like celebrate the impact of messiness it says that on the back of the book. It's interesting how he words it, but it's just such a powerful tool that I had never really thought of. And, you know, he talks about automation, resilience, and life, um, but really applying this in a fundamental and really just a baseline tactic where, you know, this is what's going to happen and we're going to use it as a way, and he goes through so many examples, real world applicable examples of how to use it uh, as a business director or a project manager or a developer or a, an architect, an engineer when you're building things um, and you, designing at a baseline the um, messiness of a team so that that team can go and achieve exactly what they want to achieve in the marketplace. Um, I think this book is just killer for anybody working on like really any team-based project who or even as an individual right I've seen profound impacts on my life like if you work at a desk or in an office or if you work from home using the uh, fundamental techniques principles and underlying tactics in this book to optimize your workflow no matter what you do at the desk um, you know creating the best environment for you to achieve exactly you know what you want to do get to higher productivity achieve your higher purpose <sighs> excuse me and get to a better place in your personal and professional life so that you know all of a sudden you're doing 20 percent 30 percent maybe you're doing you know 10 times more work and you're getting it done at a more comfortable and more personal level because you have embraced this new workplace environment um, where you're just in control and you're crushing it and that's a really big takeaway from it um, especially if you're in like a professional field uh, you know doctor lawyer whatever like I feel like it's really applicable there too because there's a lot of stuff to juggle and balance and a lot of organization with folders and files and if you work a lot in accounting or with any aspect of business where you're looking and handling a lot of professional documents and papers, um, I think this is a really great insight into taking that information and bringing it into sort of a collection system or a sorting place where, you know, all of a sudden, right, you've got a whole new outlook on your work and you're spending less and less time on stuff that doesn't matter uh, like organize and, and working more and more on what you're really passionate about um, so just phenomenal if you like do work <laughs> um, and specifically with like computers or a lot of files organization information papers uh, freaking killer book link below. Um, I really hope it helps you guys out. Uh, thanks so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.